Hello. And today in this video, we will be discussing aspects related to the GitHub repository that houses the necessary scripts, name lists, and other configuration type files that are needed to run the three supplied cases within this tutorial. In order to navigate to our GitHub project repository, you can copy and paste this link here, and then you can navigate to our GitHub repository called container DTC NWP. We land here on the main branch, but can easily navigate to other branches. And this is typically where we do a lot of our development work. And then you also have access to the different tags. And this is where we have official release versions of the container DTC NWP code. I'll be spending a majority of the time within this components directory here. You can see a number of directories and the base directory, GSI, MET, METViewer, Python, UPP and WPS WARF directories all contain the necessary Docker files that are used to build the images that are used to run our container code. We have two methods for obtaining the different Docker images that are needed to run through the tutorial. One is that we have instructions to build from scratch. So you can use the Docker files and the instructions provided on our tutorial to build the images from scratch. And then we also have instructions for pulling the pre-built images from Docker Hub. I'll give a brief overview of what a Docker file looks like. This particular Docker file is for compiling and setting the necessary environment variables needed to run WPS and WARF. You can think of a Docker file as sort of like a recipe for building a Docker image. It has a number of commands and you can set environment variables, run commands, as well as setting the necessary permissions and different environment variables that are needed to run, in this case, WPS and WARF. And again, we have the necessary Docker files for running all the different components of code that are used in our end-to-end -end system. In the repository, we also have a scripts directory, so I'll briefly step into here, where we have a common directory, and this is where a number of files that are used for all three cases are housed, and then we have individual case directories that have the case specific settings. I'll navigate into the Sandy directory to provide an example of what's contained in the case specific directories. The first two, metconfig and metviewer, provide the necessary files for Sandy specific verification, as well as plotting the verification graphics. And then we have a number of configuration files that are used for running WPS and WARF, as well as the unified post processor. Finally, I'll step into what's called the setenv.ksh file. And this is a file that contains a number of settings that are specific to running WARF, GSI, UPP, Python, and MET for Sandy specifically. And so if you would like to modify any things such as increment hours, forecast length, etc., you can do so within this file. Next, I will step back out and we'll go through the common directory. Within the common directory, we have the Python scripts that are used for plotting the model output, and then another, a number of helpful scripts that are used to run uh, the individual components. And then I also wanna call out that we provide examples for how to pull uh, the initialization and verification data from both AWS as well as NOAA's nomads. So that covers uh, the main components of the NWP container repository. Next, I'll provide a brief overview on what we call issues. So if something pops up when you're running through our tutorial and you think there's a bug or a problem, you can post an issue. Or if you have a question, you can also post an issue here. And this is where we will address things related to the code under the repository. We also have something called GitHub discussions that you have access to. And this is where we typically put announcements. So when we have a new version of the code that's released, or if you wanna start a discussion with other users, you can do so on this discussions page. And then finally, I wanna point out that we also have the releases here on the side. So if you wanna stay up to date on the current release, you can do so this way. And we also provide access to the GitHub issues that were addressed in a specific release, as well as being able to access the code. So you can get an idea of what has changed since the last release. And so that provides an overview 
of what we provide within the GitHub repository. And if you have any questions, please reach out.